Today, we are going to talk about research. That's it. That's all the intro is. Either they're a high school student or they're an undergraduate student who wants to get into research. Like, what's the best way for them to approach this? And is going to an international or a, a country outside India is the only option to do this right now? All right, Crazy Medusa family. Now, I know a ton of you guys watch this channel to get inspiration and motivation for your dream universities, whether it's Ivy Leagues or any other university out there. But something that I have never, ever, ever talked about on the channel is the importance of research. How important is this? to either put as an extracurricular activity in your college application or just in your CV to have as an additional skill set. Research can first be in any field, whether you're a biology student, a computer science student, you're doing business management, fashion designing even. The whole concept of research is one, to explore and find innovative things in your field of expertise. As long as you're doing that, you're doing some research. So the big question is, how is this important and how can it help you? Now, the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that this whole concept of research is not in any syllabus. You probably won't find this as a part of your curriculum. So if you're doing something like this, the first thing it shows is that you're someone who's proactively taking a step out of their comfort zone to do something beyond your required educational goal. And the last thing is that you get to work with a group of mentors, whether it's a professor that you're working under or simply just other students and colleagues who are helping you in the project. You get to learn so much. So you get to expand your network, your skill set, and there's just so much hands-on experience that comes along with this. So all this sounds really nice and fancy, but how do you know that you're a good fit to get into this whole uh, arena of research. I know that when I did my research at Harvard, it was such an overwhelming experience at first because I was surrounded by people who just knew everything. They had been doing this for such a long time and I was really new to this whole area. So it can get really intimidating really quick. So right now as an engineer, I'm really involved with the design aspect. So I'm not super, super, you know, into research and just like academia. Um, uh, focused at the moment, but I'd like to speak to someone who's actually been doing this for years now. Uh, it's a fellow YouTuber. She's been doing microbiology based research and she's done it in three different countries. So let's talk to Shweta and hear her experience throughout this process. Uh, Shweta, welcome to the channel. And for everyone who's watching, I recently did a collab video with Shweta where we spoke about some extracurricular skills that you guys need to have, whether it's just on your college application or just a good to have as like interpersonal skills for your resume. So if you guys haven't watched that video, definitely recommend watching that. But before I go on and on, Shweta, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself? Yeah, hi Saloni. First of all, thank you so much for having me on your channel. So uh, like you said, I completed my bachelor's and master's in microbiology from University of Pune in India. And then I went on to do second master's, which was a research master's in molecular mechanism of diseases at Radboud University in the Netherlands. And right now I'm here in a US. I'm currently working as a research assistant in Cincinnati. And like you said before, other than that, I also have a YouTube channel where I share my life as a research student and also share some tips and my experience on studying abroad. That's so cool. I mean, you have just so much of experience. I'm just like astounded. But um, I want to know a little bit about, you know, when did you get started in the whole area and field of research first? When did you think that this is something you wanted to take on as a career? How was your thought process like back um, a couple of years ago? Yeah, so uh, to be very honest, I didn't know that I was going to land up into research. Like most of the students, I was confused. I didn't know how to get started. And I think most of our viewers or your viewers will relate to this. Like as an Indian student, when I was in grade 12, I had like two options in front of me, engineering or do medical. That's all. <laughs> so I also had those options with me. And in, at that point, I just gave all the entrance exams and passed all of them, whether it's for medical entrances or just, you know, to get into engineering, you have CET, then you have NEET. So I was confused. But the one thing which I knew for sure, you know, which I knew where I wanted to go was like, I had a strong interest in biology. I always was interested in biology. So back of my mind, I always knew that I would like to 
do a career in biology, but I didn't know what. And that's when I came across microbiology. And then I did my more, I did more research because honestly, I didn't know more about it back then. And I didn't know anyone else who had done microbiology before. So I was like, okay, let's look into it. And then when I did, I thought that it was really interesting. So I just set out, you know, I started with BSc microbiology. And within the first three to four months, I knew that this is something I want to do. Research is something I want to do because I was really enjoying working in the lab, doing experiments, you know, having a research question and chasing it, trying to find out the answers, trying to solve it. And I just started enjoying it. So I went on, I did my master's. But then again, you know, I realized that microbiology is not something I'm like really liking. I developed interest in immunology in my second year of master's. So I went on to do immunology. Like, you know, I thought I need to explore more. I need to refine my skills because microbiology has, you know, different, different practical skill set. And now when you want to switch to immunology, you need to work on your skills. It's theory knowledge, a lot of things. And then I went on to do second research masters. And then now I finally know that this is something for me. Right now, I feel that I'm in the right place, you know, in terms of field and also in terms of career, just as research. So it was a like very long journey and a very long story. No, that completely makes sense. I mean, you know, like just thinking about it, this is going to make, at least it makes me sound very old. But back when I did my undergrad, YouTube wasn't as big of a, as a platform that it is today. So you really couldn't go on to see what a biomedical engineer or what a microbiologist does. So honestly, like hats off to you to taking all of those risks because they kind of like pave a path to the rest of the career. And we didn't really know, you know, what to expect because like you said, engineering or medicine, I was in the exact same boat and I wanted to be involved in biology, but I didn't want to become a doctor. And I'm so glad that, you know, you, you're sharing this experience now because anyone who's watching this video can really relate to that, that there's so many options available, right? Yeah. And, you know, like for a brief period, I was also considering biomedical engineering and I did, you know, like look for colleges, but then I was like, no, let's give microbiology a try. So it was just like trying to find out. I never knew that this is, you know, something I want to do. Gotcha. So if someone is like, you know, in, in the boat that we were in, where either they're a high school student or they're an undergraduate student who wants to get into research, like what's the best way for them to approach this and is going to an international or a, a country outside India is the only option to do this right now? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, as far as I'm aware, I think after 12th, you can do bachelor's or master's, you know, like like I did BSc. You can start with BSc, try to try to find your niche subject. I think that's about it. So I knew that I want to get into biology, but biology is not just microbiology. It's botany, it's zoology. There are so many subjects which we don't even know. So if we find a niche subject, then you can start with bachelor's, then get your master's degree and then go on to pursue PhD, maybe postdoctoral research as well, if you're interested. But uh, I think it's not that you need to go abroad in order to do this. Gotcha. Perfect. I think I, that's, that's a good way to put it. I mean, Definitely. with all the advantages and the strong points that we have in India, use that to your advantage yeah. so that you're not just complaining about what you don't have, but you're utilizing those resources in a more productive manner, right? Let's say, for example, if someone is interested in a in a bio-based research, um, I won't go you know, too much into a specific department, but in general, should they approach like uh, universities should they approach um, standalone labs for example if they're in India so uh, yeah you can definitely uh, uh, approach standalone labs they do provide internship opportunities but I think that if you just uh, go to the websites of these universities or if you go to the company websites you can see that they have listings for internship opportunities so directly apply to them but if you're interested in particular lab let's say you are interested in a lab which is working at x university so just go to the department page, try to contact the professor by email and writing an email or requesting for an internship position. There's a specific format that you need to follow when you write an email. So you have to be you have to share all the information, but you have to be precise and concise. So the best option would be to write an email for an internship opportunity. And in that, you know, try to outline your interest, why you would like to do internship at that position or at that place. What makes you a good candidate? for that particular internship, like how you would add value to that project, let's say, 
how you will benefit for it and why you want that particular lab like what makes you interested in that lab and like did you watch the professor give a talk somewhere maybe a tech talk did you attend some seminar or did you read some research paper which the author you know which he was the author and that is what interested you in doing that particular research in his or her lab so outline an email stating all these points obviously attach your resume and then that is the best way to go ahead i would say if you cannot find any vacancies perfect. and you still want to do at, at that that lab just write out an email that is like the perfect template that you know you can provide and i guess like the only thing i would add is um try to find specific people to send these emails out maybe like a department head that you're interested in maybe the professor pi and you know in most cases in my experience they do respond um to your email they won't ignore you they might say no but they won't ignore you <laughs> you're right about it uh, or they just write back to you saying that yeah. sorry at this moment we don't have any position i have received so many emails like this that thank you for your interest but right now we are not looking for a candidate which is okay then you know at least you get a reply always so don't be hesitant to reach out and write a an email absolutely all right perfect that sounds good uh, well shweta that's pretty much all that i had um did you want to share anything else with our you know audience today Uh, yes, Alonia. I would just like to conclude with few points, you know, because we are talking about research as a career option. So, um, at least coming from India, I have heard a lot about choosing BSc as a career option, you know, because I have faced it that when people used to say, "Why did you choose BSc? It has no future. It's not a mainstream career." stuff like that so i just want to tell every student out there who wants to get into research or is pursuing anything don't be, be you know taken aback or don't set back because you hear things like this it's a very long road when i started it i i never knew i would end up here so don't let comments like this you know hold you back try to find your niche try to work on it because looking back at this if i had stopped when everyone was telling me that i wouldn't be here uh, a large portion of this society's thinking comes from the fact that yeah it's true that maybe 20 30 years ago this field didn't have as much scope then but right now there are so many opportunities available the situation that we're in right now precisely tells us how important it is to have biologists in all the fields doing cutting edge research Now research is just for innovation so that we can move forward and it's being well known it's giving importance there are jobs out there so you just need to make sure that you keep in touch with like the statistics and you know that you're going into a field that has scope and you know what you're doing yeah i completely agree with you so don't let things like this you know set you back just believe in yourself and i would say keep working for it but i think as long as this is something that you want to do um you know people like shweta feel free to reach out to her she has her own youtube channel um where she provides amazing and insightful information about stu- uh, study abroad productivity research, research research and also you know she she shares her experience in general so you know um having literally traveled all over the world um over the last few years it's amazing what you've accomplished so you know thank you so much for uh coming on the channel and um everyone who's watching please go subscribe to shadow's channel and watch the collab videos uh thumbs up all the videos and um thank you so much shweta thank you so much alvin it was nice talking to you all right so that was some really valuable insights from shweta and i'd like to share some research opportunities where you as students can actually go out and get started with this but before we do that i think it's important for you guys to actually build a foundation so you know what you're doing before just like jumping right in into a practical experience so this is where i'd like to introduce you guys to skillshare which is an online learning community with thousands of classes and mentors across 150 countries now some of the classes that i personally found useful and it will be helpful for anyone who's looking to get into the research arena was the designer's guide to writing and research by Stephen Heller and the complete research project blueprint by Andre Clapper now these courses have some fundamentals of research that you can actually learn before going out to get your hands on experience so getting this conceptual research out of the way before your hands on experience will really help you stand out from the competition and not be as intimidated as probably i was when i first had my research experience 
So the first 1000 people to use the link in the description get one month of Skillshare trial for free. So I've divided like finding research opportunities into two groups to make things easier for you. The first group is if you are a high school student, what should you do and where should you start? The number one thing you should focus on here is to find out what you're interested in. Like don't be too hard on yourself. If you're like 17, 18 years old and you already know what you're doing, you're way ahead of me. I had no idea. So just kind of see what you want to do, whether it's, whether it's biology, math, physics, genetics, engineering even, you know, go out and just explore. But once you have a rough idea, then try to just like find nearby standalone opportunities. What I mean by this is, let's say you're an aspiring biomedical engineer, for uh, example. So try to find some labs. Maybe you have some uh, family friends who are in this field and just go shadow them. Uh, get to see what they do, what a day in the life looks like, and kind of like ask questions along the way, trying to understand and grasp like the actual severity of that career is such an invaluable experience for you at this age. Now, in addition to that, you can also find virtual internships, find webinars. Don't worry about getting paid at this stage. Now, the experience that you're getting is far more invaluable than getting a paid internship. So take advantage of anything and everything you can kind of use to learn more. Now, the second group is if you are an undergrad or doing some sort of like a degree program, what should you do? First thing is start off small. Try to look for your own department research that you may be interested in. If not, look in your own university for other departments. I'm sure nobody will say no to someone who's just willing to learn. But other than that, what you can do is actually look for these internships like summer or winter internship programs, the MITACs, for example, the AIBN, and a lot more like these. But something that both high school students as well as degree students both can do is reach out to your local universities. Now, the reason I say local is because you're a student and you may not be getting paid. My goal is to make sure you're not blowing off your money in these experiences. So, you know, you shouldn't be like traveling or anything unless you're getting a stipend. But reach out to your local universities and just find out if you can be involved in any professor's research write emails to them. Shweta mentioned how important writing emails was and she also shared a rough template. So make use of that and reach out to professors to see if they'll be willing to mentor you, even if it's for a short duration. Now, for example, if you're in India, for Bangalore, for example, since I studied there, you can reach out to CSIR or IASE. Both institutions are great. And you know, even though you're not applying for like admission, so don't get overwhelmed by the fact that you're reaching out to these high-end institutions, even if it's like an IIT, all these labs and professors have some, you know, vacant spots for summer interns and just, uh, you know, incoming short term temp uh, research researchers. So you can actually get those opportunities. Other than that, um, other places like the DRDO in New Delhi can also be helpful. I actually applied for their internship. I didn't get selected. No idea why. <laughs> all right, guys, now that's all that I had for this video. Now, before I say goodbye, let's talk about the 50,000 giveaway winners. Uh, this video is roughly dropping around 15th January, which is when I said that I would make the announcement. So here are the winners of everything on the screen right now. Uh, please reach out to me at mentorship at crazymedusa.com. Uh, include a screenshot of your comment so that I know that it's you and I'll send your, uh, you know, sweepstakes along the way. So congratulations to everyone who won and thank you so much for participating. I honestly have so much fun when you actually, you know, uh, comment in uh, the videos, it makes it so interactive and I have a blast reading those comments. So I want to keep this tradition alive. I know the giveaway is done. You don't have to comment if you don't want to. Um, but I would still like to know from you guys. Um, this was a different video that I did where I spoke about research experience and I have no clue, you know, what kind of research you're interested in. So let me know in the comments below, um, you know, what field you're maybe aspiring to go to or if there's a research that you're already pursuing let me know um i'm sure if it's something different it'll be helpful for everyone kind of just to uh gain awareness uh, into you know that this even exists but that's about it for this video uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't already smash that thumbs up button and i'll see you guys in the next one bye